Hello and welcome to Thoughts from the Bubble. I'm Kiera, your host, and welcome to my podcast where I talk about my random ass thoughts. <laughs> this is episode two. So I'm so excited to finally just be doing this, sitting down and getting these thoughts out. It, it feels good. So one of the things that has been on my mind to talk about um, is this syndrome of um, imposter syndrome. So I first heard about this probably like a year ago. Um, I was on LinkedIn and I saw it. I read an article and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. And I moved on from it. Um, But a couple of days ago, I was scrolling through TikTok and I came across a video of this girl talking about um, that a lot of people, a lot of women, I should say, that she's encountered in corporate America kind of experienced that. And and even more, a lot of Black women um, experienced that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I heard about this. Let me let me do some digging um, to kind of, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Um, so this caused me to kind of go down a rabbit hole with imposter syndrome. Uh, so what it is, is the condition of feeling anxious and not experiencing success internally, despite being high performing in external objective ways. So the feeling of, of oh, I'm not supposed to have the success or I'm not supposed to be here um, or they're going to find out about me. Like I'm not really this person that they think I am. And that caused me to be like, wow. Okay, I think I have that. And it's shown up, you know, um, as I was digging down this rabbit hole, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, So that's what I want to talk about today um, is imposter syndrome. And how do we let our brain like take over and make us, you know, think these thoughts of ourselves? The brain is crazy. Like, it really is. You know that that song, uh, My Mind's Playing Tricks on Me? That That's true. I mean, your mind will play tricks on you. It will have you thinking that you are not worthy. That, that again, like, oh, I'm not this person that they think I am. When more than likely, in fact, you are the person. It's you. Like, you are doing these things. They're not going to find out that you don't know what you're doing. Hell, they don't know what they're doing. Let me tell you, most of these people in these workplaces, the higher you go up, the more they don't know what they're doing. Hell, I don't know what I'm doing every day. I just do stuff. (laughs) Honestly, I just, I just do stuff. It it sounds weird to say that. Um, But earlier in my career, I really felt like, oh my God, like, do they know who they hired? Like, it's me. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what this is. I don't know what an I-9 is. I don't, I don't know how to do an investigation. But here's the thing. Everyone starts at ground zero. No one is born knowing how to do most of the things. It has to be taught. Like, you do it through practice. And that's it. Like, when you start to think at it like that, it's like, oh, everyone started here before just because they know how to do it now doesn't mean that they weren't in my shoes before. So this imposter syndrome, how, how how does it show itself, right? Like how do you show that you're an imposter, that you have this? Um, So it looks up some of the characteristics and it could be self-doubt and lack of self-worth, self-sabotaging, setting unrealistic expectations, fear of not living up to those expectations that you set. You could be burnt out. And those are literally all of the things that I felt, especially earlier in my career, trying to navigate corporate America, which in those spaces, there are not many Black women. Not at all. And it's hard because you look around and no one looks like you. So it's like, man, they all look alike. You know, mostly it's 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 men as you start to move up in a company. It's it's 
it's men, it's white men. And if there are white women, there are very few white women and you got to navigate, you know, dealing, dealing with, with, with white women is whew, Lord have mercy. But again, those, those, they're, they're not like me. So it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm experiencing this success externally in front of these people, but inside I'm questioning everything. Like, do they know who I am? Are they, are they going to find this, this one thing out and, and fire me? And you just live like in a constant fear and that's not good. Like, that's not good. I've, as I've been this year, I've, I've really been looking at kind of drawing closer to God. And one of the, the, the scriptures, you know, that I read is like, God doesn't want us to have fear. He doesn't like, let's be honest. We're, we're, we weren't supposed to be fearful people. We weren't supposed to have fears. You know, that comes from the devil. So what I do is when I start to experience any of these characteristics of imposter syndrome, I stop. I stop and I say, Kiara, are you giving yourself grace? Kiara, is this fact <laughs> or just a thought? Because again, our mind will play tricks on us. It's crazy how our, our brain is. Like they haven't like in the medical industry, like they haven't even touched one third of like what the brain can do. Like it's still a mystery. And it's just crazy how your thoughts could have you really thinking that something is true and externally it is not true. In therapy, I learned that your thoughts are not facts. So that's the first question you should ask yourself. Um, let me go back. The first question you should really ask yourself when you have these feelings of imposter syndrome or, or any type of, of, of negative thoughts, just say to yourself, is this true? Is this fact? Or is this fiction? Or is this made up? Because most of the time, it will be made up. Like our minds, we have to train our minds to think positively. And that's one of the things that I'm working on now. Every day, I feel like I have like a negative thought about something. And I have to say, nope, uh uh-uh, nope. If I have a negative thought, oh, I won't be able to do this. Do it anyways. Just do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Let me get that out of the way so that I can cross that out. And once you do it, it's not as bad as you've made it seem. It's really not. You're like, oh, really? Well, I could have did that months ago. You know, like we got to we gotta train our minds to be positive, to not have those negative thoughts and not be fearful. Because guess what, y'all? We are not supposed to be fearful. We are, we are supposed to walk with our heads up high, just like God intended us for, for, for us to be, you know? So yeah, don't don't let your brain have you thinking you're crazy or that making mistakes is wrong. Because it's not. Mistakes are honestly mistakes are good. As I'm getting older and having more grace with myself, I'm learning that mistakes and failures mean you tried. You tried. Like, I remember being younger and just saying, and I said, I said this out loud, which I'm cringing now that I said it out loud, but I used to say, um, oh, I have a fear of failure. And no adult in my life corrected this, um, which they probably didn't know, you know? Um, looking back, I'm like, no wonder I was like a scary kid. Like, I didn't do nothing. I didn't, I didn't color outside the lines. I didn't do any of that because why? I was like, oh, if you do that, you're going to fail. And then everybody's going to, you know, point at you and laugh at you and do all this stuff. And it's like, I should have done more. Like, there were kids who would say, oh, I'm going to do this. And they would do it. And I'm like, wow, okay. You're going to do that. And, and, and they, oh, you know, they got the told of, that's not good or, you know, try again or you'll never be that. But like they did it anyways. There's something so beautiful about people who just step out and do it. I've never been the, that, that type of person. I think the first time that I stepped out and, and did something was, first of all, uh, when I met my boyfriend, 
um, meeting him, moving, and then now this podcast. <laughs> I'm 28, and I've only really stepped out like three times about the norm and 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 done something that could have failed. Um, and they have. They they've they failed before, and I had to get back on the saddle. I had to get back on the saddle and 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 learn from those mistakes. But I was actually reading an article um, this morning on LinkedIn. Uh, I forgot the names of the companies. I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. But um, these companies are, are they, they're saying they're having too much success. They're, they aren't having any, any mistakes. They aren't having any failures. And I was like, wow, so these CEOs are warning failures. They are. You know why they're wanting failures? Because that means that they're having people who are going outside of the bubble, who are, you know, stepping out and and taking a path that is unknown, that no one is doing. They're being, you know, their most like creative selves. And that's what these companies, they, they want. They want failure. They want, you know, mistakes. And it's it's crazy that really high successful people probably have had a bunch of failures and they made it one time. And that's crazy to think about. Like, wow, when we see them succeed, they probably had about 15, 16, 20, 30, whatever it may be, failures. But they kept at it. And I think that's something so special to to note is that, yeah, I stepped out and I did that. It may not have looked how, you know, you wanted it to look, but me, I stepped out and I did it. Yeah, I may have gotten something wrong. But again, I didn't know what I was doing. I stepped out. And then the next time I step out, I can know what to look for. I know what to do. I know how to move, you know. And each time you start to pick up something. And then before you know it, it's like you're at the end. And it's like, oh my gosh, I did it. Have y'all ever felt that? Like you, you've stepped out and with no path, no one holding your hand, no, no one guiding you, but God, you know, that he's guiding us, but, but no one, uh, fleshly is, is guiding you, but you just jump out there and you do it. And then you, you, you look back and you're like, wow, I did it. I did it. Let me, let me pat myself on the back for that. Which I hope you you all are doing that because that's something that I struggle with is is um, congratulating myself when I do something. Um, when I got my my MBA, I was like, oh, it's just a piece of paper, whatever. You know, everyone around me was like, oh, congrats, and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Even my boyfriend, like, that's something that he brags on. You know, I don't brag on that. It's like, oh, it's just an MBA, whatever. And also, I'm like, what? It's just a piece of paper. What does it mean? I accomplished that, but what did it get me? <laughs> uh, I'm sure it got me something, um, but not what I was was thinking or not being fulfilled in that way. But when you 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 step out there and you do something, make sure you congratulate yourself. Because guess what? You 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 did it. You didn't know what you were doing. Hell, don't nobody know what they're doing. Again, ain't nobody Jesus. We're all imperfect people. We are going to make mistakes. That's it. Every day you're going to make a mistake. But here's the thing. Learn from that mistake. Learn to the next time that you step out there and do the same thing, you'll know what to look for. Then again, you're going to go down a a road. And then again, you're going to hit another roadblock, you know, because, hey, you've never been on this journey before. So you, you, you might fail at that. All right, then come back. So now you got two roadblocks that you know how to maneuver. You know how to jump over those. So when you get to your third one, oh, okay, I've got another failure. But guess what? Get back on there. Now you got three roadblocks. And that's what you have to tell yourself um, of when you're navigating just life. Jump out there. It's okay. Failure is a badge of honor. And I'm learning that. It is a badge of honor that I'm proud to be wearing. <laughs> I'm proud to be wearing. So if you're listening to this, step out there. Do something that you've never done before. And if you fail, give yourself a pat on the back. That means you tried. Well, that's all I have for today. 
thank you for listening and coming to the bubble. Um, I appreciate it and have a great day.